people are getting so concentrated on this land needs to be in farming, this land is where we need to build a house, that they sometimes forget that wildlife live there, that this is home for something. It would be safe to say most kids in Jones County spend months and months pampering their prize animals for the county fairs and livestock shows. It's just a way of life here, and every morning ritual of sorts. Feed the animals before you feed yourself. But stock shows don't give ribbons or cash awards for Bob White Quail. Daddy. Meet Lois and Clark, Callie Bunn's critters. Daddy. Lois, when she gets scared, her heart beats real fast. It's just like holding this life in your hand. It's really neat. There we go. When the first white settlers came, probably one of the first sounds they heard was Bob White Quail. It's okay. You know I'm not gonna hurt you. Callie Bunn says there's not a better sight up on the rolling plains than the fleeting footwork of the Bob White Quail. Old timers called them prairie dancers, coveys skittering across the ground in every direction like ice cubes on a hot skillet. Have you ever seen a, a lady in a dress? And you know how she takes baby steps? That's, that's basically what quail look like to me, like they're just kind of shuffling around. Everybody thinks quail's cute. I've never come across a person that didn't say, oh, quail are those cute little things when they're babies, they look like little puff balls. You know, they're just adorable. I could take a baby quail and set it in front of the grumpiest person in the whole world and it would brighten their day. You know, they're just one of those things. I don't think you could say about that about buzzards. You couldn't take a baby buzzard and set it in front of somebody and they would go, oh, how cute. <laughs> But you can do that with quail. They're just a neat animal. They're fun to watch. But over the years around Callie's hometown of Stamford, as more prairie was plowed into farmland, the echo of the Bob White almost faded away. Callie took a dim view of the quail decline and launched a one-kid campaign to help bring back the quail to Jones County. Jones County is mainly a farming community. It doesn't have a whole lot of cattle in it and it doesn't have a whole lot of what you would consider typical rangeland. We've pretty much run all the quail out of this county in this area. Instead of romance novels and homecoming corsages, her tiny room is strewn with scientific journals and research data. Books like Beef Brush and Bob White's and Soil Texture Studies are light bedtime reading. Callie's even developed a website and conducted doctoral level field research into quail. Add on the 200 speeches and scientific demonstrations she's delivered, and she barely had time to pick up her Texas Youth Conservationist of the Year Award. I got teased, son, and I, had, I have this nickname, that's, it's even in the yearbook, and it's the quail girl. And you know, and to me, that it bothered me at first. But then it, it just went away. Can you imitate the sound of the Bob White? No, I can't. I know, it's pitiful. <laughs> Come on, just try it. Okay, wait. <whistles> See? Told you. Our program today is Callie Bunn. <laughs> She's the daughter of Bob and Gail Levern. She's a recipient of the Texas Youth Conservation of the Year. Let us give a warm welcome to Kelly Bunn. Sometimes you lose quail habitat when you try to fix more farmland. There are so many, much more you could do. We're trying to get habitat back to where quail can live in it. I have come so far in the last two years. You know, two years ago, I wouldn't have gotten up in front of an audience for anything. And now it doesn't scare me anymore. She may not look like she can blend in with her surroundings, but I mean, I have almost stepped on a quail nest and never knew. You get up and you talk to people about something that they've never thought about before. When are the eggs usually laid in the, in the spring, I presume? Mm -hmm. Spring and summer, 
Yeah, I think it's from April to July, I want to say. Sometimes it's later. You'll think, well, they probably forgot what I said the minute I left. And you'll be in the supermarket a month later and they'll say, hey, you know what you said the other day? That really helped me and I really like that. But thank you for inviting me today. I hope y'all have fun. I'll be driving down the road and I'll see one riding across the road and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a quail and it's so cute, you know? <laughs> so it's just, it's a little more personal now. And it just kind of, it touches your heart because you know that you saw one and at least maybe you helped them in some way. In 50 years, they may be gone. But at least you say, well, I tried. Yeah, you feel a lot better now, don't you? Someday, when Callie Bunn looks back on her teenage years, chances are she won't recall cheerleading or Friday night lights. Callie seemed to have a greater legacy, throwing the first punch in a fight to bring back one of the original mascots of the Rolling Plains. Folks in Jones County call her the Quail Girl, which to Callie is a touching tribute to her compassion and clear vision, a vision focused on the everlasting echo of the Bob White Quail. I heard an expert say one time that there are areas in this United States that will lose quail by the year 2003. I won't give up until we hear Bob Whites every time we go outside, like it was 100 years ago. Still I wonder just who is Bob White and why are all those birds looking for him? Thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Phillips. This is Texas Country Reporter. We'll see you next time.